Robert Bowley was born on the 7th of January 1899 in Maputo, in what was then Portuguese East Africa, nowadays Mozambique. His mother was a Lebanese Catholic and his father Greek. When Al was three, the family moved to Johannesburg, where the senior Bowley sold jewelry in the new town market. Al's early life was filled with music. In those days, there wasn't records as such, wasn't radio. Families made their own entertainment, and the Bowley family was no exception. They would have guitars, banjos, ukuleles, and different members of the family would play different instruments. To Al, it was the ukulele and banjo he took to, and the singing, of course. Among the foreign visitors to the South African stage were English music hall stars like Lottie Collins, as well as traditional minstrel shows like the Ethiopian Serenaders. There was music all round Al in the melting pot of Johannesburg. Al, being a music mad teenager, would make it his business, I think, though, to listen and seek out all different kinds of music. And of course, it was American music. This was at the time when the jazz age was just starting, the ragtime. Sheet music would be coming over, if nothing else. And I think this American music really captured Al's imagination. In order to earn a living as a teenager, he went to work in his uncle's barber shop and had the bright idea of strumming the guitar occasionally and singing to the customers, the singing barber. Uh, without the quartet, this was the barber shop man. His father helped set him up in his own barber shop when he was a young man. But it was obvious to the family that his heart wasn't into being a barber. He started gigging around different South African functions and he would do a little stage act where he was impersonating Charlie Chaplin. So uh, this is how he got into show business. Al was playing one weekend at the Sattersall Club in Kirk Street when he was spotted by Edgar Adler, South Africa's favourite band leader of the 20s in the American style. He's booking bands into the cafes and the hotels and the ballrooms in Johannesburg and he gives Al his first job. At that stage, I don't think that he was hired principally as a singer. He was a rhythm guitarist. He wasn't taking solos, he was purely a rhythm guitarist alongside the bass and the drums and the left hand of the piano in, in the band. This is a time when actually the singer with the band is not a star within it. I think we have to acknowledge that difference from now. This isn't a pop star singer. Shortly after, and he joined Edgar Adler, the band had a conversation and Eddie said, wouldn't it be really nice if we could get to London to find the latest stars, to hear the best band, and maybe make a bit of a name for ourselves? And Al in particular and the other members of the band said, yeah, that would be great. So what they decided to do was to work their way across to London, and they started a tour. Al Bowley left Johannesburg with Edgar Adler's band at the age of 24 in July 1923. He never came back home again. The plan was to go via the Suez Canal and end up in London. But in fact, they get an invitation to go to India. And musicians were treated really well there. They were treated like celebrities. So they really had a jolly good time. And singing was becoming more and more important. Al would be singing some of the hits of the day, things that I never see Maggie alone and baby face. But the one song which he seemed to have a hit with and asked to sing more and often was Yes We Have No Bananas. That was his hit song in his tour of India. Yes, no. we have no bananas. We have no The band continued its tour out into the Far East, ending up in Java. But just as Al's career began to stabilise, his fiery temper got the better of him. A recurring theme in the Al Bowley story is that he had arguments with people and he had more than one falling out with Edgar Adler. The story is that Al had thrown a cushion during, during their performance at the leader of the band, Edgar Adler. From the wing, Al Bowley got hold of a cushion and threw it at him through full view of everybody. And Edgar Adler said, you're sacked. And he was left with his suitcase and his banjo sitting on the station without a job. For the next 18 months, Al scraped a living as a singing banjoist in untraceable cabins across the Far East, before he resurfaced in Calcutta in 1925. It is 
see the Canadian band leader called Jimmy McQueen. He heard Al Bowley sing and offered him a job with the band. And this was a, was a great break for Al because the, the Queen band got a residence at the Raffles Hotel in Singapore and they worked together there for quite some while. They were touring and playing in upper crust colonial venues and hotels. Raffles has always been one of the world's most famous uh, hotels. And it, uh, there was no riffraff in there, maybe. It was a bit posh, you know. From there, Al, again, still had this ambition, as Eddie Adler did, to get to Europe in London in particular. And he heard that Edgar was beginning to establish himself in Germany with the, the jazz band there. So he wrote to Edgar Adler, saying he was sorry for his misdemeanors, enclosing a signed photograph, saying, you know, I'd really like to rejoin you. Adler was delighted to hear from Bowie. He happened to be looking for a new singer and immediately sent Al the fare from Singapore all the way to Germany. They were reunited in the summer of 1927. He was unknown when he arrived, but he soon became established and became a bit of a jazz celebrity. He started making records in his own right as a soloist. In fact, he made his first vocal record in Germany and it was Irving Berlin's Blue Skies. Al enjoyed some success in Germany through the Edgar Adler connection. He also recorded with two prominent Berlin jazz band leaders, Fred Bird and the black trumpeter Arthur Briggs. But his chief ambition was still to get to London. Again, the fortune smiled on Al, because one of the members of the Edgar Adler band who he toured with earlier was Len Phillips, a guitarist. He'd managed to get uh, the guitar chair at the Savoy Hotel in London with Fred Elizardi's band. And when Fred Elizardi needed a vocalist, Len Phillips said, I know the very chap. So Al sent his record of Muddy Water, a solo record he made in Germany, over. And when Fred Elizardi played it, he said, that's the guy I want in my band. Muddy water, July 1928. Al Bowley had finally arrived, five years after leaving South Africa. He immediately joined Fred Alizaldi's band who were resident at the Savoy Hotel. 